Hi everyone and welcome to the Sansa Fashion Channel where you will learn how to revive, restore, redeem and renew your wardrobe. In this video, I'll be discussing how to actually look for buying a sewing machine. Like what do you look for? What features do you look for? Where do you look for buying a sewing machine? So I'm going to show you guys three options to choose from and also five tips of what to look for when buying a sewing machine. Before that though, I would say learn how to do things by hand first because sometimes you just do not have the time or you're not around a sewing machine to actually mend your garments. I would definitely recommend you to download the Revive Hand Repair course it's free you will learn how to reduce your waist you will learn how to reduce your hem mend a hole repair a snack all available in a quick and easy PDF guide that you can just click to the video that you need that will help you get started so download the guides first and then continue watching hit the bell when subscribing to be alerted to new videos so the first thing that I would recommend, if you're just starting to sew, get a handheld sewing machine. It might be a good option for every, anyone who's short a space, don't have enough space, don't have enough money, don't have enough time. This might be something for you. And this is my first one that I purchased from this company. Check my next video to ask so I'm doing a review on this so you can see. So the next option is get a hand down sewing machine. You can get it on a second hand shop sewing machine or somebody can give you a sewing machine. That can also be something. There is an antique sewing machine um, online. Can be also something for you to think about. Um, I got this sewing machine called the Husqvarna Type 19E, made in Sweden. Don't know exactly the age of this machine, but it's very, very old. It only does a straight and zigzag stitch. It is very heavy. You can take off the arms, so you can do, it's very versatile as well. There's like lines, so you can have a guide to sew. I have to say, however, that because it's an unknown brand, and if it costs it so old, there isn't much information out there. So you have to either really look on YouTube and Google. And if you can't find it, you go to your local machine shop, sewing machine shop, and there's not always spare parts. So if the machine is broken, then that's it. You can't do anything about it. So that's a negative part of having a really old sewing machine that you can't find sewing parts for it to fix and you can't fix it yourself as well because there's not enough information online to fix it but it is a good um, starting point for anyone who's low on budget and you know you have someone who's able to give it to you for free it's a starting point but I will not keep it there and I will not rely too much on having an old sewing machine. Another negative thing as well, most of it is very heavy, like this is so heavy, that's why I don't always use it. I prefer to just keep it on a sewing table, but I have small space, so it remains underneath my bed or in my cupboard. <laughs> and then it doesn't get used. As you can see, like there is dust, and dust is not good for a sewing machine. You have to use a sewing machine at least once a month just to make sure that the machine mechanism is still working and doesn't get rusted. So it's very important when you get a sewing machine that you use it at least once a month, at least like one hour a month, use a sewing machine and get that motor rolling. So the next one is using a brand new sewing machine. So. What should you look out for when buying a new sewing machine? Now, the first thing you need to do is go for a branded machine. Do not go for unknown brands if you're starting out. The reason why is because you want to be able to search online, look for reviews, look for issues like any bad issue. I always, when I go for reviews, I go for the bad reviews first because I want to know what kind of problems do I have and is a problem big enough for me that will stop me from purchasing the machine. And how often does this problem come up? That is actually a main concern for me. So I like Singer because it's a well-known brand and it's easy to search out for and there's products that goes with it. So you have to think about feet and needles that will go with it to enable you to do more stuff. So Singer, Brother, Yanomi and Brenina. I hope I said it right. If I didn't, it's written down. Tip number two, 
So you want a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, so you can have a nice finish on the edge. You want a, an overlock stitch, if preferably you can have an overlock stitch because that will make things easier, especially when you do jersey, to have an overlock stitch. If you have a buttonhole, you need to have a buttonhole stitch because one day you want to make buttons. I don't like buttons, I really don't like buttons. So have a buttonhole stitch and a reverse like this one does back and forth, reverse stitch. Also, you want to have a machine that goes and has the head can come undone. So when you have a sleeve or something really small that you want to stitch, it's easy to have this removed. Also, you want to have a machine, for, especially for beginner, but you have machines that have a front bobbing opening here, or you have one that's a drop-in bobbing. So I prefer the one you can drop in so you can actually see this one here has a drop in where you can drop in your bobbing. It's clear, you can see. So if there's an issue or threads are coming undone, like threads are coming knit together, then you can see it. You can see if there's something on. And you can also see if your bobbing spool is um, almost finished, the thread is almost finished on bobbing pool. So instead of you sewing, sewing, sewing and not knowing what's happening, you can actually see. So I like to have like a window, I call it a window, <laughs> so I can actually see what's happening. And that is such a good thing for a beginner. You do not have to have a machine that is a computer. You don't need that. It's just a fancy way of doing it. It has a lot of stitching and I can tell you, um, more than half of these stitchings I don't even use. I don't, I really don't. These are the stitches, so the straight stitch, zigzag, overlock stitch, the buttonhole stitch, and the reverse. That is the main thing that you need that will keep you going. Everything else is decorative. Tip number three, accessories. Now, look for the accessories that comes with the machine. You need to have a buttonhole. So handy, trust me, you would want this. Then for zips, you want to have a feet for your zips. So this is zip feet. And then you have the invisible zip feet. I use. There is a blind hem feet that you can use as well. I will say also have a twin needle. Definitely, definitely look online what is available for your machine. Tip number four, try out your local sewing machine shop. Try out before you buy. It's just like a car. I compare sewing with driving. Try it out. You wouldn't buy a car online without trying it out, would you? Would you? Me? Really? Would you? I wouldn't. Um, especially if it costs me money. <laughs> I want to see before I buy. Noise level, like look at the noise level. If you have young kids and you don't want to make too much noise, these are the things you need to look out for. People will say in the reviews as well, like it makes a lot of noise. I mean, I was buying a printer, I, that was the main thing I, I was concerned about. I just wanted a printer that doesn't make any noise. So that was one of the things that I looked out for. So look at the noise level, look at the shaking, you know, if it's shaking while you're sewing um, your desk, you don't want that. Is it easy to set up? Does it take a long time to thread as well? Another thing to look out for. And how much to repair? How much does it cost to repair the machine? Ask them about how much does it cost to repair that sewing machine if it breaks down. Does it cost me a lot of money? You know, that's why it's best to have a machine that is mechanical than just plastic. Go a little bit more, purchase a machine around 300 that will cost you and saves you so much time in repair and it'll save you so much time in making gums as well because you'll be able to use the machine to sew denim. Denim is very hard to sew. Leather is very hard to sew. So you want a machine that is able to sew denim and leather and also is able to handle delicate fabrication like silk and chiffon. So very important for these four materials, silk, chiffon, denim, and leather. So you will get needles for those type of um, fabrication, but it's also good to have a machine that's able to handle all these different fabrication. 
and there's a guarantee look at guarantee like if you have at least two years guarantee that'd be great because I'll give you two years time to try out the machine and see if this machine is working for you if it doesn't work for you at least you're able to bring it back and that is the main important thing I will look for guarantee can I actually bring it back if it's not working for me so that's another thing with having a second hand machine or something that's handed down to you you can return it it is there it's purchased can't return there's no warranty for it whereas when you buy a new sewing machine there's a warranty for it you're able to return it you're able to have it fixed long term it does work out spending money on buying a sewing machine that you can actually return if there's an issue long term tell me below comments what sewing machine are you going for antique brand new like comment and subscribe and until next time, bye bye.